the 55th Annual Academy Awards presentation, brought to you by the Buick Motor Division and your Buick dealer, who proudly announced the 1983 Buicks. And Revlon, Revlon, the people who help make the world a little more beautiful. And Atari, video games and home computers. Atari, a leader in entertainment and education for the whole family. And GE, and GE we bring good things to life. Our 55th Oscar show continues with a man who adds dignity and stature to any occasion, Mr. Charlton Heston. Academy agrees on an appropriate candidate. These ceremonies include the presentation of the Jean Herschold Humanitarian Award. For those of you who may not remember, Alan Defoe, the country doctor who delivered the Dion quintuplets, or some of the nearly 400 other characters he portrayed from the silent era until his death in 1956, here is Jean Herschold. I think here is Jean Herschel. We've lost the film. Cue cards, cue cards. No. I'm sorry. No film. <laughs> Should we skip the film? Yes. Never mind. <laughs> Gene Herschel was a wonderful man. Come up to the house, I'll show you the film later on. <laughs> Tonight, though, we honor with this award a man whose career as a filmmaker and a citizen has earned him the regard of those he works with and the gratitude of those he serves. He and his films have been honored repeatedly, not only by this academy, but by other organizations and governments here and around the world. But the respect and admiration accorded him by his peers stems as much from his tireless efforts on behalf of the many organizations, the public sector organizations he's served, several of them as president. <laughs> this academy is one of them. Others include the Center Theater Group, the Performing Arts Council, the Motion Picture and Television Fund, Cedar sinai Medical Center, and the American Film Institute. In the end, though, I think we come to value a man not for what he does, but simply for what he is. Tonight, I'm very proud to present the Gene Herschel Award in those terms to a gentleman and a very good man, Walter Mirisch. Thank you, Chuck. I have worked in the motion picture industry my entire adult life. I've been privileged to know and collaborate with a remarkable group of people. I produce pictures of which I am very proud, and I'm preparing exciting and challenging new ones. The Academy honored me some five years ago with the Tholberg Award, and now this. In short, this industry has been exceedingly good to me. It has provided me with the opportunity to realize many of my most deeply felt creative and professional aspirations. A natural extension of those involvements has been the acceptance of some of the responsibilities of good citizenship. It's been a privilege for me to participate in various professional cultural and welfare activities of this industry and this community. 
I'm grateful for the opportunities that have been accorded to me to serve, and I enjoy the fulfillments and the friendships they've brought me. I recommend them to others. Now, thanks to Pat, who encourages me, to Andrew and Larry, who forgive me, to Marvin and Jesse and Harold, and thanks to the Academy and its Board of Governors, who continue to encourage excellence in our films and in our community. Congratulations, Walter, thank you. That wasn't, what happened, I just found out, wasn't Mr. Heston's fault. They were gonna roll a film clip, and then they didn't, nobody told him. I mean, it's nerve-wracking out here. Stuff like that can happen to you. It's so nerve-wracking. In fact, I think that at this point, I'm going to turn the podium over to uh, somebody who is, I think, probably the most suave, debonair, attractive, statuesque, always articulate man that I know. Mr. Dudley Moore. Shut up. <laughs> I must say. <laughs> noise. I, I must say I've, I've admired the way in which you've conducted the proceedings so far. You know, I, I think you've, you've restored an element of dignity to, um, to a ceremony that, uh, that has been in the past within a hair's breadth of being a piece of fluff. <laughs> What's that? Fluff. Fluff? <laughs> I hate it when that happens. I know. That. Yeah. <laughs> I've missed you so much, you know? Yes, I have. Ever, ever since we did that film together, you know? And then I didn't hear from you, and you promised. You didn't write, you didn't, you didn't call. I thought we had a life together, family, children. I was, oh, hello. Fine. Good evening. My pants are killing me. I'm very grateful to the Academy for letting me be an unnominated short subject. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a great responsibility, appearing on a show seen by nearly 400 million people in 74 countries, Gosh. two of whom, whom I know personally. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm relieved of one responsibility this time around, uh, in as much I'm as I'm not a nominee, I'm not bitter, fine. <laughs> I don't have to worry about my acceptance speech. I don't know if you've noticed, but maybe it's nerves. Winners never seem to know when to stop. They, they're always thanking people they haven't seen for years, mothers and fathers, and of course, in some tragic cases, wives. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God, life. Um, and in some, oh, I've said that. Oh, all right, I'll say it. If it isn't too presumptuous, <laughs> gosh, this is fun. I'd like to suggest a model acceptance for all winners. And in that hushed moment, the envelope is opened and you hear, over the pounding of your heart, your name called. You leap from your crouching position, you grab your Oscar, you look your agent straight in the eye and say, who needs you? <laughs> well, after all that jocularity, <clears throat> to present the next winner, we welcome the handsome opera star of La Traviata, Placido Domingo, and the glamorous singer who proved her dramatic talent in Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, Cher, Cher. 